Stephen Cohen, the infamous hedge fund crafty trader and the new affluent boss of the New York Mets baseball team. Steve Cohen was one of the most famous hedge fund managers in the world. What is it like to be famous for being amazingly clever in trading and also for scandals that rock the financial world? It makes us cringe when someone whom we adore and look up to for their talents plunges down to the gorge of shame for misusing their innate gifts, for unethical professionalism. Yes, of course, we have come across countless men known for their knowledge, their fast and winning ride with extremely high risks in the financial world, and followed by their philanthropic activities that after each big win, their names getting carved in all good books, but right behind closed doors in an exceedingly clandestine approach, with their smashing brains, they plan, prepare, and blatantly proceed to feast on the fruits of their unethical efforts, only to be surprisingly caught, point blank, and in a moment, all their fame plummets into the abyss. This is the story of the infamous billionaire hedge fund manager, Steve Cohen, who strode high for his high risk methods with the investor's money and high reward trading strategies, and he earned both fame and disgrace for insider trading allegations. At present, he is the new owner of the glorious New York Mets of Major League Baseball sport and shares majority ownership of the team by 97.2%. So let's start with Steve Cohen's family. Born in a Jewish family in Great Neck, New York, Steve Cohen is the third of seven children. His mother was a piano teacher and his father was a dress manufacturer in Manhattan's garment district. At high school, he had a great affinity towards poker games and he played well by betting his own money in tournaments and often gives credit for this game as this provoked the habit of taking risks. As I got older into high school, then maybe I didn't study as hard and we were playing a lot of poker and we basically played poker almost every night, which doesn't lend itself to studying. So. <laughs> After his graduation from John L. Miller Great Neck North High School in 1974, he enrolled in economics at Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania. While in school, Cohen's friends helped with $1,000 of his tuition money to open a brokerage account. And also, Cohen was initiated as a brother of the Theta chapter of the famous Zeta Beta Tau fraternity, where he served as a treasurer. After his graduation from Wharton in 1978, Steve Cohen set forth in his venture into the financial market starting small as a junior trader in the options arbitrage department at Gruntel & Co. He made a whopping profit of $8,000 on his very first day. Eventually, with his strategy, the company made around $100,000 a day and he handled a $75 million portfolio and six traders. This success at Wall Street helped him build significant personal wealth. Ambitious and exceedingly sanguine about his flair for trading skills, he decided to establish his own company. He pulled $10 million from his own purse and another $10 million from outside capital to launch his first hedge fund and named it SAC Capital Advisors in 1992. The three-letter name of his firm is actually his initials, Steve A. Cohen, SAC. At SAC, stock positions were held only for a short while, sometimes a few days, sometimes hours. In 1999, Cohen hinted that SAC regularly traded 20 million shares per day. However, in 2006, the Wall Street Journal reported that although Cohen was once a speedy trader who always held trading positions for short periods of time, he now has a growing number of equities for extended periods of time. By 2009, SAC managed $14 billion in equity. Almost over two decades, SAC progressed and prolonged on various budding investment approaches, formulating multiple strategies, fixed income, and global quantitative strategies. From 1992 to 2013, SAC attained annual earnings at 25% for all their investors. In 2006, the SAC swapping reported 2% of all stock market trading activity. SAC strategy was a high-risk entity and a high-reward trader. His portfolio was managed with the late 90s dot-com bubble, that is to 70% returns and earned another 70% when Cohen shortened those same stocks, when the tech bubble burst in 2000. In 2007, SAC acquired a $76 million stock position at Equinix. A month later, when the corporation released confident earnings, its share value increased drastically by 32%. In the inception of 2012, Cohen gambled on Ardea Biosciences at a whopping $26.7 billion. As soon as AstraZeneca signed a deal to procure the company three weeks later, the purchase amplified Cohen's position on Ardea close to $40 billion. SAC took extensive positions in the Whole Foods market, and in 2009 and 2010, they were fixed for $49 million and $78 million respectively. During those periods, the stock prices soared high because of very promising functional changes facilitated within the supermarket chain. 
On the other hand, Cohen's firm was also inflicted with significant losses, which dragged over two decades, a sequence of multi-million dollar deals with pharmaceutical companies. I'm Clone Systems and Human Genome Sciences, which was held in long positions, tumbled down and became unsuccessful. They proved costly to Cohen's portfolio. Next, the episode of racketeering and insider trading charges. Phone rings and says, Jeffries is going to upgrade Amazon in six minutes. 30 seconds later, I made about a half million dollars. In the year December 2009, the ex-wife of Cohen, Patricia Cohen, sued both Steve Cohen and his brother, Donald T. Cohen, for insider training and racketeering. Even though this case was dismissed by the United States District Court in Lower Manhattan, the second U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals in New York held that the lower court made a big blunder in discharging fraud-based claims by his former spouse, Patricia Cohen, and so revived the lawsuit. The way I understand the rules on trading and inside information, it's very vague. The scam acquired huge momentum as years rolled on, and was considered a major criminal case for the first time in history that involved a hedge fund. Investigations were undertaken by Preet Bharara, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York from 2009 to 2017. And it led to the arrest of two senior employees, Michael Steinberg, one of the closest confidants of Cohen at SAC Capital, and ex-SAC manager Matthew Martoma. Nevertheless, an article in Financial Times quoted about Stephen Cohen as, escaped criminal indicted himself despite being the living, breathing heart of SAC Capital. Everything fumed to a point that by the year 2013, the company rushed to plead guilty and settled to pay $1.8 billion in fine, and the company shut down its operations. This disgraceful episode turned out to be a wide, wide web of insider trading tactics, and the web included many distinguished Indian American Wall Streeters, namely Anil Kumar, the former executive at McKinsey, Rajat Gupta, Rumi Khan, Rajiv Goel, and the notable Sri Lankan-born hedge fund magnate Raj Rajaratnam, the centerpiece of the trading scandal that rocked the US. All these dramatic events unfolded in a week and a day after the Lehman Brothers collapsed in September 2008. During various interrogations, offenders rushed to cooperate with the investigation, divulged all information, testified it, and pled guilty. But what actually happened behind the blinds in SAC? In the year 2008, SAC had amassed a $700 million extended position in two pharmaceuticals, Elan and Wyeth, which shared operations in a drug development trial for treating Alzheimer's disease. Unfortunately, their joint venture during the second phase of clinical trials led to a disappointing result, and when the failed outcome was aired, stocks of both companies plunged. Interestingly, SAC Capital suffered no loss at all, because prior to the days leading to this dreadful downfall in their shares of both pharmaceuticals, Cohen liquidated SAC Capital, which was nearly 750 million positions in Elan and Wyeth, and also shortened the stocks. This gamble against Elan and Wyeth got Cohen a profit of $276 million. Nonetheless, in 2012, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission accused Matthew Martoma, a former SAC Capital portfolio manager, of an insider trading act. It was suspected that Martoma passed on a piece of information to Cohen about the failings of the pharmaceuticals clinical trial and the anticipated falling of the shares. Immediately, Cohen sold the positions even before details about the failed clinical venture hit the news. In the federal court, United States attorney mentioned that this incident was the most lucrative insider trading scheme ever. Many other senior officials of SAC were charged with various outcomes, and in 2014, Martoma was convicted for nine years, yet Cohen was never charged. Following this, a civil suit was brought against Cohen by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission for not overseeing his senior employees' trading management, and this was settled by Cohen with officials in January 2016. That same year, SAC Capital was penalized and it pleaded guilty for insider trading. Apart from the $1.8 billion in forfeits, further settlements with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission stripped Cohen from managing assets of outside investors until 2018. The prosecution witness, Dr. Sidney Gilman, against Martoma stated that he was told by the FBI agents that Cohen was the investigation's eventual target and he was featured in the New Yorker article titled, When the Feds Went After the Hedge Fund Legend Stephen A. Cohen, in the January 2017 issue. It was later known that Martoma had bet heavily on the Alzheimer's drug, Bapinuzumab, and was extremely inquisitive on the research that he engrossed into the research details of the drug. It seems Martoma, along with his wife, Rosemary, a pediatrician, labeled a new word in their lexicon for this drug as Babsolutely. 
Anyways, all this didn't stop this brazen business. Cohen, who in 2014, went on to transform his investment operations from his flagship hedge fund, SAC Capital, to Point72 Ventures Asset Management, a venture capital fund that makes early stage investments in 2016 and from January 2018 onwards. Cohen's firm was approved supervisory clearance to manage outside the capital. Arts Painting he is a voracious art lover and has zealously collected expensive paintings and artwork worth around $1 billion. They include signature works by several well-known artists, namely Pablo Picasso, Lucio Fontana, Willem de Kooning, Alberto Giacometti, Edvard Munch, and Andy Warhol. Proudly owns Picasso's Le Rêve, Kuhn's Rabbit, and Damien Hirst's The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living. In 2015, Cohen apparently obtained the world's most luxurious sculpture, Man Pointing, by Alberto Giacometti. Cohen also constructed a private museum on his Greenwich property for his entire art collection. Notably, in his SAC office lobby, one can see a head sculpture made of frozen blood, an artwork called Self by the British contemporary visual artist Mark Quinn. Alright, are you aware of his enormous wealth? In 2016, Forbes magazine ranked him the 30th richest person in the United States and estimated his fortune at $13 billion. Dubbed as the Hedge Fund King in 2006, he was listed as the highest earning hedge fund manager in 2014 by Forbes. In 2020, Cohen approximated $1.7 billion according to the institutional investor. Now to the New York Mets and Cohen the new owner story. Initially, Cohen was just a minority owner, with an 8% stake in the celebrated baseball team, the New York Mets of the Major League Baseball, MLB. After many exclusive negotiations in September 2020, Cohen gained majority control of the Mets, awaiting approval from MLB owners. I went to my first Mets game with my dad at the old polo grounds. Years later, my friends and I used to sit in the upper deck at Shea Stadium. That makes today a dream come true. By October, official MLB owners sold the team to Cohen, making him the new majority owner of the Mets, and he became the richest owner in baseball. Cohen's philanthropic activities are much discussed issue. Cohen has disbursed much of $715 million to philanthropic causes that involve various projects like education, arts, and culture, children's health, the New York community, and the veterans. One of his remarkable project works is when he created the Cohen Veterans Network, CVN, in April 2016. Its objective was to establish 20 to 25 mental health centers for the veterans and their families throughout America by 2020, and committed $275 million to the same. Cohen also funded the Cohen Veterans Bioscience, which conducts a study into the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder on combat veterans. He was received into the Institutional Investors Alpha Hedge Fund Manager Hall of Fame in 2008. Cohen is an avid user of Twitter and often uses it to express his frustrations through his tweets. Now digging much into his personal life, Cohen has been married twice. In 1998, Cohen and his Puerto Rican wife, Alexandra Garcia, purchased a $35,000 square foot home on 14 acres. That's 57,000 meters squared in Greenwich, the home and the principal community for many hedge fund tycoons and financial service firms. Supposedly, this man Stephen Cohen is not going to stop until he buys the whole world to himself at all cost. We have come to the end of the video. We shall meet again with another interesting financial tycoon story soon.